Today, I am going to be showing you how to upgrade to an SSD of any kind in basically any scenario. Let's get to it. Hello, I'm Noah from Anything Cameras, the channel that focuses on helping you improve your filming and photography. And as we all know, SSDs speed up your computer significantly because they don't have to spin to access information, meaning that when apps are booting up or running, the computer can access that information faster, making the computer run faster. And so today I'm gonna show you how to upgrade to one. There are several ways to do this. Maybe your computer has an SSD slot like mine, so I will be using a SATA M2 SSD. Or maybe you're replacing your hard drive for an SSD, in which case it can be a little bit trickier, but you can still work it out fine. All you'll need is your SSD, a screwdriver, or maybe two depending on the size of the screws, to open up your computer as well as screw in your SSD because that does use a screw. And then you will need a way to back up data. In my case, I will be making a recovery drive using this, which should also have my backed up data. However, you can just back up all your personal files and then create a recovery drive on an eight gigabyte or higher USB stick. And if you are replacing a drive, you will need a way to connect your new drive, most likely through USB, so that after the drive is cloned across, you can open up your computer, take out the hard drive and put in the SSD. In my case, I will be installing a drive since there's an extra slot so I don't need that and I won't be replacing any drives. And lastly, you'll need a program called Toto Backup. You'll be using the free version, that's what I'm using today, and that will allow you to clone your hard drive over to your SSD in order to make the switch to the SSD because the SSD is no use if your operating system and applications are on the hard drive and your files are on the SSD. So hopefully you have all that. Today I'm using an Asus VivoBook F510UA. I did not get it with an SSD and decided to upgrade that manually for half the pri added price of the SSD. And so it has an SSD slot, a SATA M2. It does not accept SATA M2 NVMe drives, so it has to be SATA M2. The difference is that the M NVMe has two pin uh, sections. The M2 has three. Okay, so the first step is backing up your data and making your recovery drive. For my recovery drive, I'll be using an SSD card. For backing up my data, I have this external SSD that is in a case that accepts USB. And so I will be backing data up to that. So I'm gonna go here, you can see external SSD. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete everything in this because I don't need any of it. And this will take a while because I had previously done a backup of um, my device. And so as you can see, there are 114 gigabytes. And so after this is done, um, I will show you how to do a complete backup of your um, computer to a drive. And hopefully it won't take too long. And now you can see that the drive is completely clear. What we're going to do is go to this PC. We're going to go to local disk select users, your user, and then if you want, you can copy all these things across. If you don't want that, then you can select all and then control click to remove the things that you do not want to copy across. In my case, these five things are all that I want to copy. So I'm going to copy them there and some people may want to back up their programs. I am going to do that. And so I will copy those as well. And copying these across should not create any issues.
Okay, that has now finished copying, so I rem unplugged the external SSD, and I'm now going to plug in my SD card as uh, to make as a recovery drive. And I'm going to go and just be sure that there's nothing important on it. And there we go. Now that I've made sure nothing important is on it, I can go to start and I can search recovery drive and there it is, recovery drive desktop app. Obviously you want it to make changes to your PC. So now this is where you need to make a decision. You will almost definitely want this checked. The reason is, is because if you don't check it, you can boot up from the recovery drive you can you make, but you cannot re reinstall Windows from that recovery drive. So as long as you have a flash drive of eight gigabytes or more, definitely check this. And uh, if you don't have one, I would recommend getting one so that you can create the recovery drive. And then after you check this, you can just follow the on-screen instructions. It will ask you to select the USB device you want to make into a recovery drive, and then you can continue on from there. Now we are going to actually work on switching over to the SSD. The first step is cleaning up your hard drive. Make sure that the space used is less than the advertised space that your SSD can hold. So for example, mine is 250 gigabytes and I'm only using 210 gigabytes of space. This is important because we will literally be cloning the drives across. And if there's not enough room, then files could be lost. Next, we're actually going to open up the computer to put in the SSD. So I will be right back. But I'm gonna take a pause here to say, if you want more videos like this, or you want help improving your photography or videography directly, and not just speeding up your computer, then definitely subscribe. I have an awesome computer video planned. They should come out hopefully in a couple months. And basically I'm gonna be custom building a PC rig for video and photo editing, but it will be modifying an old desktop computer very old so that will be a fun project to do if you would like to see that then definitely subscribe but let me continue teaching you how to install your ssd now step number one is shutting down your computer do not just close the screen do not restart do not put it to sleep do not let it hibernate shut it down otherwise you won't be happy, let's just say that. You're going to turn your computer over and unscrew all of the screws so that you can open up your computer and make sure that you don't lose the screws. So what I'm gonna do is I'm trying to keep them in the laptop base, otherwise I'll put them in the case that my SSD came in. Once all the screws are unscrewed, you want to gently lift up the base of your laptop or take off the side panel of your desktop, whichever you have. Okay, we finally got it. And you can see everything here. Our CPU is under here, our batteries, all of this. This is our hard drive. This is what you would remove should you want to replace it with a 2.5 inch SATA SSD. Here's our RAM, water cooling system for the CPU, and this looks to be the Wi-Fi adapter, and cables for the battery, etc. Now you'll want to ground yourself by touching something metal around you so that there's no stack electricity. In my case, I'm fine because I'm not working anywhere conductive and I'm not moving around a lot. Um, if you want to be super safe, then you can buy an anti-static wristband off Amazon for about $6. But now we're going to install the SSD. This is a SATA M2, not NVMe. And we're going to put this into the slot here. You want to make sure there are three sections of pins and one of them on the right side should have six. One, the one on the left should have four. If that is the wrong way around, you're going to have problems. So we're going to push this into the slot here at a bit of an angle. 
until it decides it wants to go in. You will need to use some strength. There we go. And now you can see it lays flat. We can open up our screwdrivers here, or rather our screws, and put this on the screwdriver and put it on in there and screw it down. You don't need to use any force. This is simply to keep it in place and you can feel it if you try to lift it up a little bit that it stays. So now that is installed, we can put the base back on, screw it all back in and continue on and I will cut to that. So once you install your SSD, you'll notice nothing has changed here. It's concerning at first, but don't worry because if you open a task manager and you see two disks, disk zero and disk one, if your computer is unplugged from everything because it will read SD cards as disks, then it is working, it just hasn't showed up. So to update your SSD's firmware or check that it's up to date, you're going to find and download Crucial Storage Executive from their website you can go to firmware updates. It'll search for the drive you installed. You can see here that this is the one fi MX500 SSD. You can check for firmware updates. Mine is up to date. Now, if it still doesn't work, then what you need to do, you're going to press the Windows plus R key. Oops, I just hit Control R. Windows R. You're going to type in disk management abbreviation, which is MGMT dot msc and click ok it should ask you to initialize a disk and hit ok after this you're going to want to restart your computer and everything should work properly after this you should find that toto backup can detect the hard drive so or rather the SSD. So you're going to select the hard disk as the source. As you can see up here, it says source. You're gonna hit next. Then you're going to select the part to clone to. You want to clone to the new hard disk. Well, it says hard disk, it's an SSD. You want to clone to that, so you can just check that. You're going to want to hit advanced options. Optimize by SSD and hit okay and you should be good. Now, you may not want to proceed yet. You may want to click edit and make sure that the partitions are to your liking. The largest of your partitions, which will be most of your drive, should say a colon. A colon is the letter assigned to your drive and you should have just a couple small ones. If any of those small ones are taking up, say, a gigabyte or more, you should be able to size them down. In my case, I'm pretty sure I'm okay, so I can go and hit next. And as long as you've not put any data on that SSD, you can hit yes, because the SSD will be wiped. And now this may, will most likely take a while to complete, and so I will be back once it is complete. Okay, it has finally finished. It took an hour, but it has finally cloned the drive over. So you can now hit finish, and now if we go back to File Explorer, we can see that we now have this disk right here, local disk A, and this has the exact same thing as this local disk here, and we are almost done. We're gonna go into BIOS to set our SSD as our boot drive, meaning I have to shut down the computer, meaning I can't record, screen record my experience here, However, I will be here explaining what I'm doing, even though you can't see my screen, but you can always look up a tutorial on your system's BIOS so that you can do the same process in your BIOS because the BIOS depends on the motherboard and so everybody's screens will look different. So I'm going to stop recording my screen. I'm going to close everything out. Now there are a number of ways to enter BIOS. One way is mashing the delete or F2 key on startup. Another way is going into settings, and this is what I prefer. If you go into settings and click advanced startup, then there's an option to go into BIOS from there. So that's what I'm going to do. 
I've gone to settings. And then if we go to update and security, this is Windows 10, by the way, go to recovery, then there's advanced startup. And this just puts you into BIOS. So we're going to go, we're going to hit restart now. Next, we are going to select troubleshoot. We're going to click advanced options because if we click reset this PC, <laughs> yeah, no, not, not good. And then UEFI firmware settings. It'll ask you to restart to change the firmware settings and you're gonna click restart. Now you will notice it booting again, but you're in BIOS. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the boot menu. In my case, that's F8. And we want to select from drive one, which is that MX500 SSD and hit enter. And now it will boot from that. And when we go to file explorer, we should find that the drive letter was changed to C colon instead of A colon. C is the boot drive in Windows and we should have no problems whatsoever. My system has booted. I'm going to file explorer this PC. That weird partitioned drive has disappeared. Local disk C has 232 gigabytes and local disk D has 930, which is all correct. And you have now successfully switched your SSD over, meaning your performance will be a lot faster. Now, there are a couple things you'll want to do to make sure your SSD one runs properly. The first one is make sure that disk defragmentation is off because it is inadvisable to defragment an SSD because defragmentation is where the computer or the program or whatever it is moves around different sections of a hard drive so that information relevant to more information is close to each other and it's not spread all over the hard drive, meaning that it has to spin multiple times to access that information. With an SSD, it doesn't have to spin, so it doesn't matter where the information is, meaning you don't need to de defragment it. And if you do, it can cause certain problems. And that's all there is to it. If your SSD is running properly, and you don't need any of the files on your hard drive, you can go ahead and reformat it so that there isn't any conflict between the files. And then you can move the files on your SSD over to the hard drive and you should be all good to go. In fact, I'll do that now. It's super simple, but that all looks fine. So I'm going to right click on my hard drive, click format and follow the on screen, on screen instructions. No matter what people say, as long as you have your data backed up and the SSD is working properly, there is no risk in formatting your hard drive or your SSD or whatever type of storage drive from Windows as long as you don't shut it down in the process of it or something of the sort. But that concludes it. Please like and subscribe. I hope your computer is running faster now.